Why should you care about cancer? And why should you care about cancer research? Cancer is a common problem. One in three of us will get serious cancer. Although modern research has brought us a long way, cancer remains complex and difficult to understand even for the experts. There are still things to find out which can be exploited. Cancer is the only cause of death in Australia that is increasing at this point in time. There's active research going on, particularly in Victoria. It is a known centre for cancer research. The work itself requires a lot of resources and a lot of collaborations. It's not a simple undertaking. We are seeing in the whole of our population the benefits of research. The mortality from breast cancer is falling despite a steady increase in the number of cases that our community is experiencing. So results are improving as the result of research. We can actually look you in the eye and say we are doing better. And there's recently been quite a comprehensive review of outcomes in Victoria and we are by and large at world's best standards. When I first started treating breast cancer the expectation was that nearly half of the patients I saw would die. Over the period of the last 30 years, it's now down to around 20% of patients that present with breast cancer will die of their disease. That is something that I don't need statistics and figures to understand. That is something that I can tell in the clinic. It's a very dramatic change and a very important change. Research now is not something that's just carried out in the laboratory. Here you see in the cartoon that's shown on the left about cells dividing is a particular attribute. If you increase the amount of something called HER2, you get more growth, more rapid growth, more invasiveness, more cancer-like behaviour of cells. That could be all well and fine, but does it mean anything? Here in the clinic, if there is too much of this HER2 DNA and protein in cancer cells, the patients do worse. The patients with too much of the HER2 are the magenta line here. Those with normal amounts in their tumour are in the upper line. So this laboratory information appears relevant in the clinic. So information has translated from one place to another. If you create mice that have in the cells of their body too much of this particular gene and too much of this particular protein, they get breast cancer. The parent strain of mice does not get breast cancer at all and by the time you reach 200 days more than 50% of the female mice, if you construct them so that they have too much of this gene and too much of this protein, develop breast cancer. So taking it back from the clinic to the laboratory, yes it still seems logical to continue to explore this phenomenon. What's this particular molecule called HER2? It's a signalling molecule. It sits across the membrane. So it's one of the ways that messages can get from the outside world out here to the inside world here. And it works because these two, these molecules sit together as pairs. They chat together. They sit together as pairs. They receive messages from the outside world and then send messages to the nucleus to make things happen. And you can imagine that if this is the normal distribution of these molecules on the surface of a cell and this is the normal amount of noise coming into a cell, just how much more noise, how much more of a message to grow there would be if you had a thousand fold more of these molecules on the surface of the cell. And that's literally what happens. It's a bit like me going to your house and putting 999 extra letter boxes there. Harvey Norman would give you a very strong message to go and buy a new plasma TV. And that's what happens to these particular cancer cells. So here is how this signalling works. Receptors are activated on the outside of the cell and then you find the signal moving to the nucleus. And the message here is growth, immortality, forgetting how to die, and the ability to move. And all of those are the attributes of tumours, growing faster, surviving longer, and travelling to other places. So 
the logic, at least from the biology, is this is something important in cancer. It's what we call an oncogene. And this other cartoon here shows you how this HER2 molecule, she's a very chatty girl. Her hand of friendship is always extended. And when a, one of her friends is activated with one of these growth factors, a bit perhaps like having a couple of drinks at a party, the two get together and they make a lot of chatter inside the cell. They send a very strong signal for the cell to grow, for the cell to exhibit malignant behaviour. So we have an elegant construct that says this HER2 molecule is very important in the control of growth. We also know that about 25% of breast cancer cases have too much of this molecule in the cancer itself. So is there a way ahead? Is there somewhere that we can take this observation? And the answer has been yes. And the first study was done adding an antibody that mopped up that receptor on the cell surface. And you can see with chemotherapy alone, particularly with this drug called Taxol, only 3% of the patients treated did not have progression of their cancer by one year only three in a hundred. With the addition of Herceptin, that went up to 25. Fully one quarter of the patients did not have progression of their cancer. So this was the first proof that by manipulating this particular molecule, by attacking it, by using it as a target, that research could actually now come back to the clinic and change what we do for patients. Furthermore, and we're talking about metastatic breast cancer, which is largely uncurable, the average survival, or the median survival, was pushed out by about 25% in the group of patients shown in the yellow who received the Herceptin treatment rather than just chemotherapy. 25% doesn't sound like a lot. 25 months versus 20 months. Does that sound like a lot? I can tell you if you have cancer or if someone you love has cancer, that is a tremendous difference. This could be another wedding anniversary. It could be Christmas. It could be a child's birthday. It might be a child graduating from nursing school. Very important gains, particularly in the context that for 20 years we had not been able to budge these curves with anything that we did.